I survived 100 days and 100 nights in hardcore Minecraft, but on a murder island. And this is the continuation of that story. In the last 100 days, my friend was murdered by a guy who goes by the name of Factions Duck. These final days are dedicated to getting revenge. This is part two of the murder island. If you go on to enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Let me know that you guys want more. And I'm working on a very interesting 100 days coming up very soon. But anyway, enjoy the journey. On day 100, the hunt to avenge my friend began. Duck had knocked him off a cliff and I took it upon myself to hunt him down. The only clue I had were these wooden planks. I knew Doc had made these. Maybe hinting at a direction that he went in. But I knew before my real hunt could begin, I knew I was going low on food. And you can't hunt down someone without food. So I found some wild sheep on top of the hill. And let's just say I cooked them up good. And as night was falling on day 100, I got attacked by some phantoms from the lack of sleep. That's when I noticed Faction's Duck, the murderer, had got the achievement Sweet Dreams. Oh, don't you worry. He'll be sleeping for a long, long time soon. But after getting the food I needed, I began... Searching. This time searching a new area that I didn't search in the previous hundred days. When we got the news that Jamie Raven was eliminated. He fell out of the world. He was alone and no one could ever recover where he was. Lost to the end. Gone. I knew at this point that I was so deep into investigating the whereabouts of Doc that I knew I would not make it home for the funeral. The first funeral that I missed and I did feel guilty. But with the days ticking away, I just wanted to find Doc and get on with my series. I wanted to avenge my friend. On day 102, I got very excited because I stumbled across a village, but at first I thought it was a hideout. And also I was thinking, Doc could be living inside here. He hadn't been gone for very long. A village would be a perfect place to use their resources and to live in. But I found out very quickly that all the resources were still intact. I knew Doc wasn't here. So that night, I stayed there. And in the morning, I'll continue to search. On day 103, I left the village, still searching. No signs of life, but I kept going. I searched and searched and searched. When on day 108, I stumbled across a house, not far from the location where Jack got murdered. I knew this was Doc's. It had to be. I needed to take this slow. I only had one chance to get him. I didn't want him to spot me too early. I ran away for a second and slept in a bed, making it day 109. With it being daytime now, I knew I could get a lot closer to the base. I didn't have to worry about creepers coming up behind me and blowing me off and giving away my position. This could be it here. We could get him. I got closer and close to the house, and I spotted his name, confirming this was Doc's house. I kept getting closer, ready to jump him. This time, the surprise element. When all of a sudden, I spotted that he had never right, so I backed off. He didn't see me. With him having never right, he could have much more. He could have golden apples. He could potentially have totems of undying. I nearly blew my cover. At the end of the day, this is hardcore. And the main thing I have to do is stay alive. Because if I die, no one will avenge my friend. So number one rule is survival. Stay alive at all costs. His time will come. I just need to be patient. This is when I had an idea. Back when I lost Jack in the last hundred days, on my return home alone, I found a desert temple. That desert temple had TNT inside it. And I vowed that I would use that TNT on Doc's base. And that's exactly what I was going to do. With Doc gone into the nether, 
I knew we could get a little bit of revenge. With Doc being in the never for a little while, I headed into the house. This was the riskiest move so far. I started looking at all the stuff he had. Taking anything I needed. This was a raid. I just didn't know it at the moment. I took his diamonds, his emeralds. He even had ancient debris. Every so often turned around to check my back. Just to make sure I was safe. But I took everything I needed and I began trapping the base. The idea was to put TNT underneath the house and then put pressure plates right by the door on the inside. So as he runs into his house, he will set off the TNT. Blowing up his house and his resources and hopefully killing him. But that would be the dream. Now, if you want to know my armor situation at the moment, I'm only wearing mostly Prop 1. He has never right, so a fight with him would be extremely dangerous right now, so I am risking my life. But if this works, this will be very satisfying. I started getting a little bit panicky. So panicky that I forgot how to make pressure plates. I know how to do it, but in the moment of where Doc could come home any minute and kill me, I was just panicking on how you do this. It's two stone, Ryan. Not three. Not one. It's two. There you go. Now you made it. You now need two more of these. You can do it. Relax and breathe. Now, with the pressure plates made, it's time to put them down. And of course, I'm going to stick around so I can see this. But before I do that, I'm going to have a little bit of an explore. See what he's got around here. And of course, we're going to let his sheep out. Not really that bad of a move, but hey, it's it's just something, you know? Gotta disrupt Doc as much as possible. This is when I worked myself back up the hill. The perfect vantage spot to see Doc's house exploding. Now, as I was waiting for him to come home, I decided that I was going to build a bridge out to the water. So that if he doesn't die, which he most likely won't, I will be able to escape very quickly. With that completed, it was time to wait. Wait for Doc to return. And watch something he hopefully loves crash and burn. But come on. Surely he doesn't love that house. It's awful. Looks like it was built by a two-year-old. That's when Doc finally returned. Home from the nether. At first I thought he knew about it. Because he slowed down. But then he walked straight in. Setting the TNT off. He rushed down into the mine. Saving his life. But destroying all of his resources. I was hoping he was low. Hoping. Firing a rogue arrow. And legging it. I ran. As fast as I could. Hoping Doc's blood was boiling with rage right now. That's what I wanted. I knew Doc would expect me to run far, and he would hunt me, so I thought I would hide close as the tactic. So that's exactly what I did. So I dug myself down and waited. I knew he'd probably come across. He saw me. That's when I saw him running past, hunting me down, just like I expected. I knew the safest option for me to escape would be to dig down and burrow my way closer to the ocean and return home. His house was gone. His resources were gone. This would hopefully give me enough time to return home and to grind my own Neverite set. Then it would be an even battle. As I was burrowing home, I found myself a mineshaft. In there, I found two minecarts, each having a golden apple inside them. When on day 110, when I was returning to the surface to return home, we got the news that Tomer had drowned. This is when we're all confused, because what happened here? Last thing we know, Tomers was AFK on the island. And in my head, I started panicking. What was going through my mind, that Doc had pushed AFK Tomers into the water, murdering him. Which would be the perfect murder. Because it doesn't say who done it. And I was all paranoid that Doc was on my island, looking for me. I just blew up his house after all. 
At this point, we had no information on Thomas because he wasn't responding on Discord, so we couldn't find out where he was killed or if he was murdered. We had no information. We had to be safe. I was slightly panicky, so I messaged Mikey to check on my house. Doc could be there, waiting for me. At this point, I'm fairly paranoid. I warn him that Doc could be there. Shortly after, he sends me a message saying, he's not here. I return home as quick as I can. On the way back home, I did message Doc. Did you kill him? He sends back a stupid winky face. At this point, if Doc wanted to get away with the murder, you wouldn't send a winky face. Thomas died of natural causes, being AFK and being punched into the water by a mob. We'll never know exactly what, but that's all we can guess. On day 111, when returning home, I spotted a boat. And it just got me thinking, is that a boat of a survivor? And on day 112, I returned home. Happy to see my house intact. Not burnt down, but very paranoid. I got onto the island shifting, checking everywhere. I knew Doc would come back for revenge eventually, just when? I took it slow, checking to see if my house was trapped. Was Doc inside? Everything was going through my mind. Even the cellar door, I couldn't remember if I left it open or not, but I remembered Mikey had been in here. My house was clear. It was clear for now. That's when, out of respect, I rushed over to the graveyard. Where Mikey was digging the fresh grave for Thomas. But that's when I noticed Jamie Raven. I missed his funeral. No one ever found his body. Because it fell into the void. Day one to day 101. Rest in peace. And to Thomas, let this be a warning to anyone. Never go AFK on a hardcore server. What a waste of a life. This is when we could really see that the graveyard was filling up. There were so little of us left. And the one person who has actually done bad, real bad, is still alive. This is when me and Mikey get speaking on Discord. I start telling him everything about Doc. I kind of needed a new friend. And playing by yourself all the time is quite lonely for me. So I started telling him about Doc, and I planned to get netherite and to get geared, and I needed help. Because I knew Doc was going to come back to the island and was most likely going to target me. It's always good to get help. So I started telling him about the plan. I want netherite, and then we're going to go hunt him down, and finally, get revenge. And he agreed to help me with the plan. And just as I was heading out the graveyard, I got a brainwave. It's Phoebes came to pay her respect. And I remembered It's Phoebe had been brought back from the dead. By a friend sacrificing himself for Phoebes to return. I got an idea. I started talking to Mikey about it. My idea was simple. If we could get Doc back into the graveyard and kill him there... Could Jack return? Now, myself and Mikey couldn't answer that question. That was for the admins. So I sent a message to them, waiting for a reply. But no matter what, the normal plan went ahead, which is simple. This is the plan right now. Get netherite, go hunt down Doc. Simple. Very, very simple. So I got prepared to go into the nether. Myself and Mikey took shifts. Mikey took the first guard shift and he was going to guard my base. He knew that if Doc was going to come, he was going to come from me. At this moment in time, Doc does not know that I'm working with Mikey. So with Mikey taking the first guard shift, I headed to the nether. I made as many beds as I could and I entered. I knew that it wasn't only ancient debris that I needed. I knew I also needed levels. Mikey had a fair few, but I couldn't rely on Mikey alone. I needed my own levels as well. So I started mining quartz as well. They're a very good source of XP. 
for the next couple of days, I mined. Getting quite lucky with the ancient debris, I must admit. But it did take time. At this point, I was still only mining for quartz when I was still stumbling across ancient debris. I hadn't even started using my beds yet. When as the days ticked on by, I noticed that my pickaxe was going low. So I started making my way back home. I returned home on day 118. I returned with 13 ancient debris. This was when it was Mikey's turn to go into the nether. I gave him all the beds I had because I didn't even get a chance to use most of them. And he went into the nether. My turn guarding the base. But it didn't take me long until I got bored. And I decided I was going to go mining underground to get more diamonds for a fresh set of netherite. I thought at the end of the day, if Doc returns and blows up my house and I'm the one not guarding it, it's my own fault to blame. So I headed deep into the mine. And I wasn't long mining when I sadly had to go AFK for a while. This is a server after all, and it's live. When we're on, we're playing, and if you have to go AFK, the days tick away. So I had to go AFK. So I hid myself in a hole. On day 126, I returned from being AFK. I didn't expect to be gone that long. So the first thing that I did instead of going back to mining is I rushed up to the surface to check on my base. I knew at this point that Mikey was still in the nether, so the house has been unprotected for a long period of time. I checked the house incredibly slowly. Paranoid of traps. Thinking Doc would do exactly what I did to him. That's something I would do anyway. Checking for traps, and also checking for him. He could be inside the house crouched. I wouldn't know. The house was clear. I slept. And I returned mining. As I was mining, I noticed that Doc got the achievement I spy. He was heading towards the end. Me and Mikey had the conversation on Discord, should we go and hunt him? But not long after that conversation, we noticed that he had entered the end. Mikey was deep in the nether, I was underground. By the time we got there, he would be gone. We knew that for a fact. He knew that we saw him go into the end. He knew that we were going to come and hunt him. So we did the opposite, and we continued grinding. I needed to get the diamonds that I needed. So that for the next few days, I mined, I returned to the surface, checking my house every so often, making sure it isn't trapped. When on day 130, I had all the diamonds I needed. Mikey was making his way back from the nether, and he was nearly home. And I should say at this point as well, the plan has changed. The admins responded to us, telling us if we can kill Doc in the vicinity of the graveyard, Jack will be reanimated. So that was the plan. When close to home, I got the news that Doc had killed my dog. It popped up in the chat. And at this point, I was quite confused because I didn't even think these messages popped up for animals. I ran up to the surface. Ready for a fight. Ready to take the plan and fight Doc now. Even if we weren't ready. If we had to do our plan early, we'd give it a shot. I nearly rushed into the house. But I knew it was trapped. Docker did the trap exactly what I did to him. I was too paranoid to fall for that. He wasn't in the house, but I knew he was somewhere on the island. When all of a sudden, JD Kelly in the chat started spamming, help me. I knew exactly what he needed help for. I knew it was to do with Doc, so quickly I got into a Discord call of him, and he started screaming that Doc is burning down his house. Mikey is just on his way out of the nether. I knew backup was arriving. In the distance, as I was coming over, I could see fire burning. JD Kelly and Doc were having a fight. I jumped in to help. Doc, determined to try get the kill on Jamie, kept going on him. Jamie wasn't low, but he had eaten his last golden apple. So once that's gone, he's going to be vulnerable. 
I started telling Jamie the plan. He didn't know it at the time, but I needed to tell him that we needed to bait Doc back to the graveyard. If we did that, it would be successful. It's three against one. So we ran back a little bit. And like an Avengers movie, every single Islander showed up that was online. We ran back over the hill thinking Duck was still here. But he'd vanished. Gone. I think he wanted the cheap kill on Jamie. This is how Duck operates. He likes to come in, get dirty cheap shots, and leave. He wasn't here, but we thought he might be somewhere on the island. Maybe rotating to my house. So me and Mikey panicked and we rushed over there. My house was clear and no one was there. We started scouting the rest of the island. There was still a lot of unprotected buildings that we needed to protect. Some from people that are still alive and others from people that have passed away that we want to try and preserve. But we didn't find him. At this point, we think that he's truly gone. I returned to JD Kelly's burnt down house. Now, JD Kelly, I'm going to refer to him from the rest of on the, as this series as Jamie. That's what we call him on Discord. This is when I got speaking to Jamie. He wasn't very happy that Doc had burnt down his house. Now, I must tell you guys that we're all friends on the server, but this time, like, this was on call for. Jamie felt personally attacked, and I understood it. He felt like it was random, and it is. And that's the thing of the server. There is no rules, but respect. But if you don't have that, you can do anything you want. Doc was just trying to be a menace. And as bad as it was, I must admit it was quite exciting. Because it was really bringing the island together. We were all starting to work as a team. Because at this point, it was just a war between me and Doc. But now it was a war with the island. Doc will regret what he did here. He wasn't listening and he wasn't having any of it. He was confident that he could take out Doc, even though the only thing that kept him alive was his golden apples, which he has no more of. But I understand, his house is burned down and he feels he has nothing better to do now. That's what I say to Jamie, wait, let me make the gear that we've been working for and then we will go together and hunt him down. Yes, we wouldn't be following the plan of the graveyard anymore, and bringing Jack back to life. But at the end of the day, at least we would get revenge. He agreed, and Mikey and myself got to work with the armor we had been trying to make. At this point, we had all the ancient debris that we needed. We had enough to make a full set of Neverite armor. The only thing we were lacking on was the levels. I had 32 levels, and Mikey had a roughly about the same. So we waited for the ancient debris to cook. And after that, we made our Neverite armor. This process took a little bit of time, and during it, Jamie tried to storm off. Too impatient to wait for us to make our armor. We were trying to explain to him that you're being an idiot and you need to wait. You going off by yourself won't help anyone. At least with us securing this armor, we'll be able to fight him. Jamie came to his senses and returned back to the island. So we kept cracking on. I started enchanting the armor, where luckily I got prop for Boots with Unbreaking 3, the perfect enchantment. This is when Fatal started telling me he knows a village where he can get prop for books. It's not that far away, and also Fatal has an elytra suit. So we headed off to go get them. So we waited. During that time, I was trying to get enough levels for a sharpness for sword. So I went back into the nether. When I returned, I had the levels I needed for the sharpness for, and Fatal had given me the prop for books of a full set of prop for netherite. At this point, I was fairly geared. I was ready to go, but just before I did, I got all the apples that I had and all the gold and I made as many golden apples as possible. This time something felt different. This time we felt prepared. I felt prepared. I felt like this is it. This is the moment we have all been waiting for. As a group, we decided three of us would go out and hunt and two would protect the island. 
Phoebe will protect the other side of the island while Mikey protects this side. That was the plan. Phoebe set off. Mikey stayed. I wanted to bring Mikey with us, but Fatal was the better choice. He had the elytra suit, and he was perfect for scouting ahead. If anyone was going to find Duck, it's going to be Fatal. This is going to be perfect. Fatal flew off into the distance, and me and Jamie made the journey. The plan was to head to Duck's base. The one we blew up. But with Fatal having the elytra suit, he got to the base first, and he told us that the base looked abandoned. It was still broken, there was nothing here. Duck had moved. But that's fine. Fatal waited at the old house while we made our way there. As we were going in the direction as well, I also showed Jamie the grave of Jack. Just to remind him that he's not the only one who's annoyed with Duck and who wants revenge. At this point, I feel like the rage with Jamie kind of died out. It was just a house after all, and I think he was over it. But I couldn't really say I was over mine. And it wasn't the fact that he killed Jack. Like, yes, it is. But it's the fact that he cheap shot him so bad. Knocking him down a mountain and pretending to be friends with us. It was just so dirty. We made it to Doc's old house. And straight away as I got over the hill, you could definitely tell he had moved base. It was abandoned. Everything was gone. He wasn't here. First thing I did though was went down into the mine to check to see if he's built anything down here. Maybe he's still living here. Maybe he's just built underground. But there was nothing under there. As I returned to the surface, I could hear TNT going off. And Jamie was getting as much revenge as he could. By setting fire to anything that Doc owned. Now, this wasn't the plan. The plan was to come here and expect Doc to be right here and kill him. But he had moved, and I didn't guess that, and I should have guessed it. So like any bad idea in a movie, we all decided to split up and go hunting for Doc's new base. So that's exactly what we did. Fatal flew off. Jamie stayed at the old base, still blowing it up for a second. When not long into the search, Jamie started calling out into Discord that Duck was here. And immediately, my heart sunk because I had forgotten to give Jamie his golden apples that I promised I would give him. This was my fault. This is when he was screaming out in the chat that he had no golden apples. I completely forgot. I was meant to give it before we split off into a group. Duck had got Jamie. It was my fault. I just wasn't thinking. I just forgot to give him the golden apples, and the worst thing is, I have plenty of them. We weren't far from the scene. Fatal was returning back to the area. Fatal was a little bit further out than me, but he had the elytra suit. I knew he would be here soon, but I was geared, and I was ready to go. This time, the fight was going to be real. No running away this time. It's going to be it. This is when I immediately start asking Jamie, where did you die? Where did you die? I didn't even need to. I found the stuff. Doc wasn't here. But was he close? I searched around everywhere and couldn't find him. Feeling safer now that Fatal was here, I went over and I collected Jamie's stuff. At this point, I was telling Fatal he has to be close. Fatal knew what to do and he went out to scout. Well, when running along the coast, I spotted Doc's name and I started heading straight towards him. We had found him. It's now my turn to hunt Duck. And the best part of it, I knew Fatal wasn't far behind with the Elytra suit. Let the chase begin. He had gotten himself into the water. He was panicking. I could tell. I don't think he expected me to be around like this because he didn't know. He just saw Jamie at his old house and that was it. And little did he know he's about to get a surprise that there's a fatal with an elytra suit hanging about. And in a matter of moments, he'll be here. Fatal didn't only have an elytra suit, he also had depth riders. If we can strand Duck in the water, it's game over. And the server can go back to normal and I could do all the normal survival things that we do. But at this point, the gap was closing. 
I knew I couldn't keep shooting my arrows like this, otherwise I'd lose them. This is when we came into a swamp. Doc at this point didn't know Fate was around. So I think Doc got a little bit confident and he wanted to have a fight. This was it. We were finally battling it out, even. And he had the audacity to use Jack's iron sword against me. Not long after the fight beginning, Fatal swoops in like Iron Man. This is when Duck freaks out. He doesn't like to have uneven fights. He just likes to cheap shot people. He likes to pick his fights one by one. Do I blame him? No, I would do the exact same. At the end of the day, there's no respawns. He just wants to do as much damage as possible. And to do that, he needs to stay alive. Fatal immediately went to the skies, searching for Doc, but couldn't find him. And we had a problem. With Fatal traveling all this way out here and doing all the searching that he did, he was now out of fireworks. We searched around the area, but we couldn't find him. This was getting ridiculous now. We we're both getting a little bit frustrated. The fact that he can just keep disappearing like that, it was getting annoying. This is when we at least decided with Jamie now dead, sadly, we decided to go back to the original plan. And that was to try and bait him onto the island, into the graveyard, and hopefully return Jack to us. With a ton of survivors gone, this was sounding very attractive right now. Because there was barely anyone left on the island. So getting another person back would be huge for us. And at this point, I want nothing more than to just play survival Minecraft, go into the end, and get myself my own elytra. But I knew I couldn't. Because I knew now we had to stick together. Because I knew Doc's strategy. Pick us off one by one. We had to stay together. So I started returning home to the island. This was when we got the news that Doc was on the island. At this point, Doc was losing it. He was getting so aggressive. At the start of this series, he was tactile. Now he was just hungry for blood. Doc was on the island chasing Phoebes. Phoebes was running. This is when Mikey stepped in and got Doc's attention. Mikey was geared, but he wasn't overly geared. He had about protection too. And I think a sharp three sword. Mikey told us that he had entered through the never portal, which is why he beat us home. Mikey, knowing that we were near home, he decided to bait Doc into the graveyard. And the perfect thing of this bait was, it was real. Mikey was vulnerable. Doc knew it. But Mikey knew help was close. And we were close. I could see the island now. My house burning down. Everything in chaos. The church where he came through, also on fire. You could clearly see the path he'd came through. I started rushing to the graveyard. Mikey at this point was going low. So I threw my golden apples out to him. And in a panic, I accidentally threw all of them. But it was too late. Mikey was gone. This is it. This is the fight. If we don't get him now, this has all been a waste. We started working as a team. Thieves in the background, blocking in the graveyard as much as possible, not letting Doc escape. That's when Fail swoops in. And you can see Doc start to panic. He wants to get out of here. His usual routine. But we're going to try and stop that. He tries to escape, but we stop it again. This time, even Phoebe's jumping in to help. Phoebe's had to be careful, though. She had no protection. I keep trying to block him in. I knew at this point, this was the end game. This was the real fight here. But Fatal had one amazing trick up his sleeve. He had a potion of strength. And once he drank this, it was game over. Doc has finally been killed. We had gotten our revenge, but it came with a cost. Mikey. Without him, we wouldn't have been able to do this. 
At this point, we tried to message the admin saying, could we replace Jack with Mikey? But it wasn't possible. It had to be Jack that returned from the dead. Shortly after the fight, the admin came on. At this point, we knew it worked. We knew at least Jack could return to us. But something just didn't feel right. It just felt like the purpose was over. And we'd lost so many people on the island. I just felt bad for Mikey. If I didn't drag him into this, he'd still be alive on the server today. But without him, Duck wouldn't be dead. I can definitely say that right now. We started cleaning up the graveyard. And we made a grave for Mikey. This is when I was saying to the group chat at this time, to Phoebes and Fatal, that I wanted to build a statue in his honor. Because Mikey had no survivability whatsoever. And he knew what he was getting himself into. And he still did it. What a guy. What a legend. Mikey. Survive day one to day 138. The bravest guy I know. Jack had returned to the island. Finally. We messaged him for so long saying, you're unbanned, please log on. And we tried to bring him up to speed with everything. And this is when I explain this whole journey and story to him. As you can see, this took us a moment to tell him. And with everything going on, he robbed everything out of Mikey's grave and wore it. At first we thought he was disrespecting him. But he was actually honoring him. He got someone to place down an armor stand. And he placed his armor on it. This was a nice touch. And this is when we had the honor. Of getting rid of Jack's grave. And replacing it. With a certain somebody. Jack made the first grave sign for Duck. Let's just say the words that he put on it. Weren't very child friendly. Until he remade it again. And put something a bit more PG. Doc was dead. There was peace on the island. With thanks to Mikey. And this is when we could definitely reflect back at all the people that have played throughout this series and have died. Some to PvE, some through PvP. Every one of these players had their own story. Some better than the other. But at this current moment in time, the main thing that's here is peace. There was peace, finally, on the island. Things could go back to normal. We could now open up Jack's house. I sealed it off, not expecting Jack to be back here with me, but expecting to open it once Doc had been killed. Things started return to normal. There were so many things that I wanted to get done. First of all, I wanted to rebuild my house, and with peace on the island, everybody wanted to rebuild my house. Which was so nice. This time, we rebuilt it with a bit of a modern twist. A nice glass looking out onto the ocean. It still kept the integrity of the build that it was originally there, just a little bit more modern. And it was looking good. Things were starting to get back to normal. And people were starting to, you know, have a bit more fun. As you can see by the display that you're seeing out the window here. This is when I noticed Fatal with an Elytra suit. And I wanted one because it would be so handy from getting off the island and going back onto the island for all the projects I wanted to do. My number one thing is I wanted to make a grinder. And I also wanted to build a better house. Like, yes, this was my starting house, but it was here when I got here. I wanted to build something that was more mine. But we've came full circle here. I never got a chance to explore the end because after shortly killing the Ender Dragon, I couldn't go and explore the end knowing that someone on the island had got away with murder. Well, now that person is dead. And this time, I can return to the end with my friend, Jack. But little did I know, these would be my final moments.
I found out after the recording. When Duck entered the end, he fully expected us to come hunting for him. So he trapped the Ender Portal. Duck had gotten what he wanted. Beyond the grave. But there's one positive thing I'll take away from this. You might not have saw it. But Jack survived the blast. Rest in peace to Phoebes again. And to myself. What a journey this has been.